Okay. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are taking a look at the V-Tone Bass BDI-21, the Sandsamp clone from Behringer. So if you've watched my channel a lot, you'll know that I love the Sans Amp from Tech 21. It's a world famous preamp and distortion pedal uh, that is used on hundreds, if not thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of records across the globe. For me, I really like this kind of preamp to add a bit of spice to my tone and make me stand out in that mix. Sans Amps, I think, have this signature sound that kind of scoop the high mids and give you a really girthy, a uh, clangy sound, which I personally really enjoy. Behringer are well known for making affordable versions of other pedals. I think my first ever pedal was a Behringer. It was a tuner and not a very good one at that. I've currently got a mixer from Behringer and, you know, a real mixed bag of quality versus affordability. And you, you kind of, sometimes you meet well in the middle, but sometimes it's not so good. Let's see what is the case with this bad boy that we've got here. Now, a couple of you on Instagram reached out and said that you wanted to see me review this one, and so here it is. This cost a whole £25 at time of recording. £25 for a, a pedal. It's, it's madness. I don't understand how they're making any kind of money off of these. So I've done quite a lot of uh, tone demos before recording this face to camera bit. And so I'm not gonna spend too much time talking. I'm just gonna talk you through the controls and then we'll listen to some sounds and then I'll give you my thoughts. So this is just like a normal Sansan. We've got drive, treble, bass, level, presence, and blend. Brown lift switch with your in and outs on the top here with a DI as well. So there's a couple of ways that you can use this. You can go straight out from the DI to front a house or into your recording desk, or you can just go out of the output into an amp. You know, there's lots of things you can do with this. And the DI in the name obviously stands for DI. So now let's not bloody mess about anymore. Hit that like button and subscribe. You won't regret it, I promise. So all of the controls on here are the same as your classic Sans amp. And as an owner of a Sans amp, it would be really rude not to compare the two. So using my Squire Standard Series Jazz Bass loaded with Seymour Duncan Court Pounders, we're gonna, go, we're gonna be going into a loop pedal, then into the Behringer, and recording through the Line 6 HX Stomp with the Ampeg SVT4 Pro amp sync. Then we're gonna have a listen to what this sounds like in comparison to the Sans amp. You know, put the same settings against each other, see how close they sound, and which sounds better. And then we're gonna have a listen to what this sounds like using the DI, not going into any amp sim afterwards, just the DI signal and how this affects it and how that sounds. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite sound.
gosh. There's a lot of sounds in there and a lot to unpack. This pedal has me feeling a real mixed bag of emotions, to be honest. Whilst all the controls are the same as a classic Sans amp, and it does get kind of close, it's not really a substitute for the real thing, I don't think. It doesn't quite have that quality that a Sans amp does. I found that it's quite low output. Sans amp was certainly a lot louder. Of course, you could turn up the amp uh, and everything like that. But when doing a direct comparison, that's just something that I noticed. On all of these controls, you're just not getting as much. You know, there's not as much drive. There's not as much presence. There's not as much level. There's not as much space. There's not as much treble. There's the same amount of blend. You know, if this turns it up to 10, Sans Amp can turn it up to 11. And sometimes I kind of want it to go that extra mile. I found as well, especially when experimenting with the drive settings, tell it's kind of cheap electronics on the inside because because anything past like three o'clock, you can there's really subtle changes. And then when you get beyond there, the change is massive. Really subtle changes make a big difference uh, when you get beyond three o'clock, especially when you're getting towards full drive. So the kind of spectrum and range of sounds is quite difficult to, to hone in because it's quite delicate once you get to higher up. But overall, I think this thing sounds pretty decent for 25 pounds. Come on, it's it's doing a good job, especially when using the DI out and when I was just playing a DI, I think it sounded all right. The drive sound as well, I thought was really usable. I'm not huge on the Sans Amp drive sound. I prefer to have a distortion pedal or an overdrive alongside it. But this kind of surprised me. I found myself quite enjoying it, which I don't normally do on my Sans Amp. So some sticking points about this pedal though is Look at it. Look at this pedal. That has got to be the ugliest design in the world. It's it's so simple, basic, but old looking, not classic. It's just, it's a bit of an eyesore. It looks really old fashioned. Um, and that does not sound like it's gonna last. Um, if you're using this as an always on pedal, maybe that's fine. Uh, but then if you wanted to use it as a drive pedal, when, when I'm kicking on a drive pedal, I'm normally doing it with some anger. And that's going to do some damage after a bit of time. It's a plastic casing. I don't think the build quality of this thing is that good. Another thing that really annoys me about this pedal is the knobs. It's really difficult to tell which direction they're facing. It just needs a white stripe. Just a white stripe to tell you where it is uh, because there isn't any and it can be difficult to tell which way it's facing from you know if you're looking down on it or like whilst I was making changes in the sound demo I found myself going oh no that's that's the other way <laughs> so a couple of design issues there that I think are pretty bad so I, I'm tempted to say that you kind of get what you pay for with this pedal and it's not as good as a sans amp but I can't get over that price and the you know if you're looking at it that way this thing is insane value for money and Behringer have done done a good job at this price range I think. Let me know in the comment section below what sounds you like uh, and if you liked this video because I'm trying a couple of different things. I've got some weird lighting behind me. I've got a second camera with my phone. What am I doing? I don't know. What's, what's the plan with this? I don't I don't really know. Uh, but I just thought I'd shake things up a bit and uh, see how it sticks. <laughs> Once again thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.